Lydia Gray, doe skin tissues, you will find doe skin tissues, finer, softer, stronger, more absorbent, doe skin tissues best for you. Hi everybody and welcome to my study. This is Eloise McElhone representing those so gentle doe skin cleansing tissues. And um, I have two guests for you to meet this week, both from the television orbit. One of them fairly recently in the television orbit. She used to be one of those languid Hollywood sirens with uh, quite a hairdo, who is now turned into an actress of depth, warmth, and diversity. And that is a quote from the television critic of the New York Times about Miss Veronica Lake. And we're also going to meet the director, the TV director of the year, Mr. Alex Siegel. And we're going to hear all the insides and outsides of television production. Right now, I uh, have a thank you note to start out with, actually, for TV Digest magazine, which comes in from Philadelphia. And they were very kind to do an article about me called, Can This Be the Same Eloise? And uh, it's about the fact that uh, over here in my study, I do not seem to hate men at all. As a matter of fact, I'm honestly quite normal and like both the guys and the gals. And uh, honestly, take my word for it, that's the absolute truth. So I hope you will all really believe it. And right now, I know that uh, all of you are very anxious to uh, meet that very attractive gal that I just spoke about. Of course, it's uh, the television version with both eyes showing Miss Veronica Lake. Hi, Ronnie. Hello, Eloise. And believe me, it's fun to be able to see out of both eyes. <laughs> well, I, as a matter of fact, I was just admiring your, uh, well, it's sort of a poodle cut, isn't it? Well, I really haven't found a good name for it yet. The man that cut it the first in the first place called it Pixie Cut, but I don't think that suits it either. <laughs> but you have no idea what a relief it is to finally get rid of the hair and really see out of both eyes for a change. <laughs> you mean you didn't like that sort of peekaboo bob of yours? No, there was some peculiar thing happened to people when I had the long blonde hair that was just sort of straight. They expected this to be a cold, uh, deadpan type of person, and if I dared crack a smile, they thought something was wrong. But tell me, how long have you sort of escaped from the blonde jungle and faced the world? <laughs> Since last October, when I was to go out to do the part of Peter Pan. And I think Peter would have looked a little silly on stage with hair over one eye, don't you? Uh, just slightly. You might have tripped on it once or twice, too, or crossed <laughs> the stage. But, Veronica, that was sort of your, your trademark. I mean, what did people have to say about it? Weren't they sort of worried when you destroyed it? Well, uh, some people were upset. In fact, so many of them, to the point of where I became a little bit annoyed, that would come up to me and say, well, my dear... What did you do with your hair? And I finally got to the point of where I just said, well, obviously, it's been cut. Ah, that sort of settled it. <laughs> but talking about Peter Pan, you know, that really was a far cry from those femme fatales you played in the movies. <laughs> I understand you really had to go in training for that part. I certainly did. I was in training for about a month before we actually started rehearsals with, uh, in a gym for an hour a day, and then with acrobatics for an hour, and uh, fencing for an hour, and then starting the dancing, because I also had to dance in it. And you see, all the children in the Neverland are ranging from 9 to 14, and since I'm a lot older than that, I had to train to be the most agile one. <laughs> really working. Oh, I think that's terrific. But tell me, was Peter Pan your, your first stage experience? No, I went out last summer in summer stock with Voice of the Turtle and the Curtain Rises. Mm -hmm. Well, uh, did you really uh, enjoy doing Peter Pan? I bet you must have been. Oh, too. it was fascinating. I tell you, when those children come back and say they believe in fairies, you cry yourself <laughs> on your face. Well, I think also that uh, now we've covered the movies and the stage, I think anybody who has a television set has seen you recently in a great many wonderful parts. How do you like TV? Well, I find it very fascinating, Eloise, because it's a combination, actually, of all the mediums, motion pictures, radio, and uh, stage motion pictures, naturally, because of the camera and the stage because you have to memorize your lines, <laughs> and the uh, radio because of the microphone. Mm -hmm. Well, of all the, all the parts you've done, which of the TV parts do you think you like the best? I like Brief Moment the best. Well, the obvious question, why? Was it on account of the whole story or the character or what? Well, both the story and the character, from an actress's point of view, naturally the character of Abby Fane, because she develops through three phases into becoming a lovely, warm human being. This was quite a challenge. I can well imagine. And we are going to hear more about Brief Moment and Abby Fane from not only Veronica Lake, but also from the director of the year who won the Look Award, Mr. Alex Siegel. That is in one brief moment. You know, we've been saying we both like television, and sometimes I also get a large charge out of it. For instance, Ronnie, take a look at what I've got over there for my commercial. You know, they say that uh, a bird in the hand is worth two in the bush, 
and I'm awfully glad that it is no longer bad table manners to have um, a bird in the hand, especially when it's a chicken like this, a good piece of fried chicken. And um, when you do have a piece of chicken like this and really have a good time eating it, it is wonderful to have a dough skin deluxe dinner napkin handy to take care of those dirty fingers. And you see, a dough skin deluxe dinner napkin is wonderful because they are so strong that they won't tear, even if you eat a piece of fried chicken or corn on the cob or anything, and they're so strong that they will last you through the whole meal. They won't shred or anything like that. And dough skin deluxe dinner napkins are always perfect to have. You can always be correct. They come in this formal fold, and not only in this beautiful snowy linen-like texture and white as I have here, but they also come in a series of pastel colors that are beautiful with any table setting. And because Dose Skin Deluxe Dinner Napkins are made from the same quality stock that Dose Skin Cleansing Tissues are made from, you see they're so soft that they will drape gracefully over your lap like that. But remember, they're still strong enough to last through the whole meal. And when you're finished with them, you don't have to worry. Just throw them away. And that way, Dose Skin Deluxe Dinner Napkins save you time, save you money, and save you laundry bills. And you can buy them practically everywhere. You can get Dose Skin Deluxe Dinner Napkins at your leading chain or neighborhood independent stores, grocery stores, variety, and department stores. So remember the name Dose Skin. You'll never forget the quality. Now I'd like to take you back and sort of reintroduce you to my wide eye and both showing guest today, <laughs> Veronica Lake. And um, then I think we finally better let them take a look at this director we've been talking about, don't Hi, you, Ronnie? That would be a very good idea. The TV director of the year, Mr. Alex Siegel. Hi, Alex. Hi, Alex. Hello, Alex. Hello, Alex. Very you? nice to see you here. Thank you. Nice to be here. I think, obviously, the very first question we better throw at you is, what exactly is it that a television director does? Well, Eloise, actually very little that an actor uh, does or says goes unplanned. That's mostly the director's job. For instance, Lou Florence, who directs your show here, uh, planned it so that I would come in from this side. Eventually, I'm going to sit in that chair now. For instance, uh, if I had come by my own motivation, I might have entered from a very awkward position like this, showing my back, blocking the two of you out, and eventually making a very dull picture. Uh, on the other hand, uh, a simple thing like placing us the way he did so that you could speak to both of us without leaning over in front of either of us. And not, uh, well, it would have been too crowded to put us on the... Uh, oh, I would have been glad to move over. <laughs> <laughs> well, that would have been fun, Veronica. But actually, it would have been a straight line. It wouldn't have been as interesting a composition. It would have been more difficult for Lou and Mike to have gotten the pictures that they want. The camera angles and uh, about those cameras when you're directing. Well, uh, you take your show here, Eloise. Um, we have three cameras, and Lou has uh, three available directions to get his different shots from. For instance, if he wanted to perhaps focus on me, he might get a close-up from ca this camera, as he is doing right now. Or if he wanted to get you, as you ask your questions, or any reaction to what I'm saying, he might get a two-shot from the center camera there. Like this? That's exactly right. <laughs> or if he wanted the three of us, he might get a wide-angle, looser shot on a 50 of the three of us right here. Like that. Very fine. Mm -hmm. Tell me, Alex, on a show like Brief Moment, how many uh, changes and shots do you have on that? Well, it was the S.N. Behrman play, Brief Moment, um, about 233, I'd say, Veronica. Good heavens. You know, Eloise, the really fascinating thing about this is that uh, a director, while he can write it down, hasn't got the time to look at what he's written, so he has to keep it all upstairs. Oh, which is really a problem. You know, we've, we've all been uh, saying calling shots. I think now a little explanation from the, the technical man over here as to what that exactly means. Well, uh, Lou Florence is up in the control room right now with your technical director, Mike Pardakis. I hope and they're there. I hope so, too. I think from the way that the shooting seems to be going, I'd say I'm sure they are. Well, uh, as they interpret a script through camera shots, uh, Lou tells Mike to take certain cameras which have different pictures on them. He might say, take one, or, and we go something like this, take one, take three, take two, take two, take three, take one, whatever it is, Ooh. he would tell his story that way with those cameras. And I can really see where it is very demanding for the director to have to call all those shots while all of us are here and talking, That's not right. knowing exactly where you're going <laughs> next. Well, tell me, Alex, how do you sort of prepare a production? In other words, from the time you get the script, say, a brief moment, where do you go from there? Well, from the moment I get the script, uh, each script tells a story to the director, and the director tries to interpret them into camera shots. Um, so I sit down with my designer, 
and we lay out a floor plan, which will put doors and windows and furniture, perhaps, or... Actors. Actors, eventually. <laughs> <laughs> so that they will uh, come from the right places so that you'll be able to sh get to them with the cameras that you have available. Now, after that's uh, set, I meet with a cast. First, Ronnie, I guess we sat and we read through the play to get an idea of timing right. on the show. That's right. And then we blocked out the first act on that first day. Mm -hmm. for and on that action. first day, he said, we'll all get along just fine, if, so long as you do everything I say. That's ah, right. No <laughs> problem, not from the cat. The one dictator. <laughs> uh, on the second day, we block out the second and third acts. On Wednesday and Thursday, the actors memorize their lines. And Except that he says, I expect you to know the whole hour show Wednesday. Oh, we're okay. hearing more and more tales about you. <laughs> <laughs> and... Um, Later in the week, I meet with my orchestra leader, my costumer, my prop man. We plan all this so that by the day of the show, Wednesday morning, we go on camera, and then we hope within seven hours we can fit all these loose ends together. And they always seem to turn out very neatly timed. Well, Alex, I know that you went to uh, Carnegie Tech. They have a wonderful drama school there. And then let's see, you were with uh, George Abbott. Well, uh, Ryan was talking about the difference between movies and stage and TV. What do you feel the difference between, say, stage and TV is? Well, I'd say one of the advantages of TV is, um, thanks to the camera and very able cameramen, you're always sitting in the 480 seat. You're always seeing it, the action at its best advantage. I never thought of that. That's that a wonderful description. Well, now I think we'd better kind of get your side of it, too, Ronnie. We've gotten Alex aside as the director <laughs> from the time he got the script and you went into production. How did you feel, say, from the start of that, when you first walked into the meeting? Well... Actually, television, I didn't find as difficult as stage because I was never used to the freedom of stage of being able to move around. And after 10 years of having to stay put for a camera, I'm more or less used to it. It's second nature. But from an acting standpoint of view, I think the best thing to do, particularly when you have a director like Alex, is to say, all right, I'm all yours. Do what you will. Absolutely no problems. Isn't that wonderful? <laughs> well, Ronnie, you were sort of um, well, giving us a few uh, sort of insights of how Alex uh, carries on on the set. I understand that there's just one small problem, though, that you do have with him on the day. Otherwise, he's a doll. Uh, you see, well, a Alex having so many problems on on-camera day and being responsible for everything in a long show like an hour show, uh, has a tendency to get a little nervous and he's afraid it isn't going to be just right. So it is doctors, right now. <laughs> His doctor has given him uh, pills, which he can only take three a day, and usually by 10 o'clock in the morning, all three are gone. So his crew have devised a new way of calming him down now. When he really blows his top, uh -huh. they go up and give him one of these, and immediately he's calm as a lamb. Ah, uh, you know, <laughs> somehow I can understand why. Take a look at this. I might add that that's my 14-month-old daughter, Cindy, and... Um, I lose all my temperament when she pops up. Well, I can way. well understand why. Until you have to direct her, I can see where she's going to calm you down. Well, actually, I should be giving presents away to the lady first, but I'll give it to the youngest lady through Alex Siegel, our little Dottie Doe Award for Cindy. And, Ronnie, you'll have to kind of split yours three ways, and we'll give it to the youngest <laughs> member of your household, too, I for Diane. I think Diane will be li really delighted. And thank you both very much for being with us. And thank now you. we're going to salute some stars in your neighborhood. <laughs> 